Back in November of 2023, I got my hands on an early version of the Ice River KS0 Pro Caspa Home Miner. And well, just like typical miners, we've gone ahead and taken overclocking to the extreme with these units. And with additional overclocking comes the need for cooling. And well, does any of this stuff actually do anything? Today's video is sponsored by the team over at asicmarketplace.com. With crypto mining hardware prices dropping, it's critical to find an online store you can trust with your ASIC purchases. The team at asicmarketplace.com has you covered with some of the most competitive pricing on the market. No matter what brands you're looking for, ASIC Marketplace has it. To name just a few, Bitmain, Goldshell, What's Miner, IB Link, iPolo, Jazz Miner, and many more. There are no surprises with ASIC Marketplace. The price listed on their website includes shipping. Imagine that. Finally, ASIC Marketplace takes the buying experience to the next level by accepting cryptocurrency as payment directly on their store. Go check out ASIC Marketplace today via the link in this video's description down below, as well as save $110 at checkout with discount code the hobbyist miner. What is going on miners and welcome back to the hobbyist miner channel. Well, today we're going to be doing some testing and we're going to be taking our ice river KS zero pro and overclocking it and then testing out a variety of different cooling solutions to see, does it actually do anything? So let me show you what we're working with today. All right. So we got a variety of goodies here. So hang with me. We got a lot to go over and then we're going to jump into some testing. So here we have, my Ice River KS0 Pro. And this unit is a little bit different than some of the other ones out there. We got this super early on from Ice River and it's been running like a champ since November. However, overclocking has become super popular with these units and I get it. As a home miner, we wanna get the most out of all of our miners and pretty much make the most we can, especially right now with Caspa and how much it's been pumping. So a lot of you guys have taken these little mini quiet miners that you could kind of stick anywhere that used to use 60, what, 100 watts, I guess, and you've taken it to the extreme, and you should be proud. Typical miner, just like me. So here's what I wanna to do today. I wanna to take this unit, this is completely stock, with a completely stock power supply, and we're gonna have some fun doing some testing today. So I want to overclock this using the T-Swift free overclocking software. If you guys aren't familiar, there is a free version for the KS0, Pro, 1, 2, and 3 out there. Completely free overclocking software. And the only downside for us miners is that there is a 0.5% dev fee. So keep that in mind through all of this. I'm going to put the overclocking software and a link directly down below. It's on my Google Drive, so you know you're getting it from a trusted location. I've got it from T-Swift directly, so no need to be concerned. So first off, we're gonna overclock this. Now, to overclock your unit, I'm not gonna go through all the steps because I'll be honest, I have a full 15 minute video on how to overclock your KS0, KS0 Pro, all those units, they're very similar. So I'll link that directly down below. But one of the things we will need today is we need to take our 120 watt power supply that comes with its stock and we need to upgrade it to a 230 watt power supply. Now, we're not gonna use all 230 watts, but it gives us plenty of room to wiggle. It does have your typical barrel connector, so we'll be all set and good to go with that. If you need a link to this or anything else we talk about today, check it out directly down below. So we're going to move to this power supply and we're gonna get our unit upgraded to the overclock software. Once that's done, we're gonna take a quick look at the watts at the wall using our watt meter, and we're also gonna look at the temperature on the outside of the unit. We're also going to go ahead and look at, um, there's a Ice River monitoring tool that the T-Swift team came out with that will give us a chip level temperature look. And that's exactly what we didn't have in the past when we did a lot of our testing. And we're gonna see how this thing does overclocked just like this, which is not recommended. It is recommended to have additional fans on it and take off these plates and all that stuff. So we're not gonna run it long, but we're gonna overclock this sucker and leave it 
for a little while just like this. And we'll come back and report on some of the testing. Then we're gonna jump onto all these goodies over here. So typical that you guys probably see plenty of people have is 120 watt power, or 120 um, millimeter fan on the side of this unit. Usually people are sticking it like right here and they're using USB and plugging it in and they go ahead and either pull air through it or push air into it based off of your preference. Most people are pushing air into it. That's one stage of what is recommended and people are taking off the plates on the side to give the thing better cooling. Uh, in addition to that, like the meter box came out with these cooling grills, which have worked awesome. I use these on my unit um, and put those on the side and then people have started taking it to the extreme. So I thought, why don't we test some of this stuff out? Why don't we actually see like, what temps do we get? Does this, is this even effective? Do these even help out? And then we're gonna take it a step further. So check this out. Look at these shrouds. These are 3D printed shrouds. Uh, these I got from the meter box uh, and we're going to put this to the test. This unit actually comes over and sits and plugs in on this side and then you take a fan and you blow air in through that way. This side blows air in, this side blows air in, and then this is your exhaust side using one of our plates here. So we have loads of different options to test out with all different types of fans and hardware. I'm not gonna drag it out super, super long today. I wanna get right to the point and give you guys the results so we can actually see like, is it gonna be cooler on the outside of the unit? Are the chip temps going to be cooler? You know, these are all things I want to find out today. And then if you guys like it or any of these are super effective, I'll leave links to all this stuff directly down below and we'll get into it some more in today's video. So without further ado, step one, we're going to connect our 230 watt power supply and we're going to overclock this unit, let it sit for a little while and we'll take a look at our metrics. All right guys, so we ran two out of the five total tests and we started out doing a baseline, completely stock, every way, shape and form. Stock firmware, the stock cooling solution, just nothing crazy with just the internal fans at 100%. Let's take a look at the results and move on after that to test one. All right, so our baseline, our stock setup here, you can see that our fans were at 100%. We had a 72 Fahrenheit for our ambient temperature, which is 22 C. Our hash rate average after 30 minutes was 215, and our watts at the wall was 94.7. The external temperature of the unit with the temperature gun was 108 Fahrenheit, and our average chip temp, that was something new we haven't tested in the past, with that new monitoring tool, the average chips were 53 C, after 30 minutes total. So test number two that we completed was we left everything basic, everything stock. We didn't make any changes to the physical unit. We had our internal fan set at 100%. The only big difference is we upgraded the firmware to the free T-Swift overclocking firmware and we got our stable at the 280G firmware. So let's take a look at the results. So at the 280G firmware with everything else stock on the outside of the unit, we had an average of 293 for our average hash rate after 30 minutes. Watts at the wall were 151 up from 94.7. The outside temperature increased tremendously at 127.9 and the average chip temperature using the monitoring software 72C. Now, I do not recommend running this test that I just did, keeping everything stock, keeping all the plates on with very limited cooling as this thing got super hot. Now let's jump into installing some of our cooling solutions.
All right, so test number three is with the meter box cooling grills on the outside of the unit, same old firmware. Now these cooling grills are from the meter box. If you guys do go ahead and you're interested in picking these up, I'll put a link down below. You can go with the KS0 Pro or the KS0. Make sure you pick the right model as the whole configuration is a tiny bit different between those. Now, if you are a 3D printer and you have one, they actually have a digital downloads option for $299. So you can buy this and then just print a whole bunch of these if you're interested, if you have a number of these units. Now let's take a look at the results. So we're on the stock firmware, our cooling grills are in place, our intake fan on the bottom, those two little fans are at 100%. The room is heated up a tiny bit from our testing at 74 Fahrenheit and it's 23C. Our average hash rate is 281. The watts at the wall have stayed the same at 151. However, the exterior temperature with our heat gun dropped us down to 125.9. So the outside unit, which really acts as a big heat sink has dropped a tiny bit. And the average chip temperature has gone from 72C down to 70C after 30 minutes of testing. So what's next? So next we're gonna go ahead and install an 120 millimeter fan on top of the unit blowing inward. So now the top fan is blowing inward, the bottom fans are blowing inward, and it's exhausting out the side of these cooling grills. Let's get to work and do our testing. All right, so let's talk about our hardware for this test. So based off of the overclocking software, they don't recommend a 120 millimeter fan that plugs in via USB. It's always nice, but they don't recommend it. What they actually recommend and what I'm using in this video and what you guys saw is an AC Infinity Axial 1225. So this is about a 51 CFM fan and this thing is a beast. It's significantly heavier heavier dutier. This is like a metal material versus that plastic there. It does come with the guards that you guys did see in the video, as well as the connector to the fan is actually this like little double barrel pin that actually plugs into it. And then you plug directly into an AC outlet. And that is actually what is recommended within the overclocking firmware documentation. Now, everyone's always looking for screws. It comes with the screws that you guys actually saw in this part of the video but if you guys pick up a different fan i totally get it and do whatever's best for you i have the screws separately from amazon if you guys are interested i'll put a link directly down below all right let's go ahead and take a look at the results all right so this test is the best test so far and definitely proves out that this cooling really does actually make a difference so taking a look here we have the 120 millimeter fan that we talked about on top, pushing air in. We have the air on the back side, and then it is expelling out the sides of this unit through the cooling grills. So room temperature, same thing, 74 Fahrenheit with 23C. The hash rate is up, up to 295 now. And the watts at the wall have actually dropped actually by about three total watts down to 148. Now the external temperature is the lowest yet down to 100 Fahrenheit on the outside of that unit using our temperature gun. And our average chip temps, massive difference. We are all the way down to 51C and the uptime has been 30 minutes. So this airflow is really making a difference, especially when it comes down to our chip temps and the exterior temperature of the unit acting like a heat sink. All right. Let's jump on and get that shroud system installed. All right, so I wanna show you guys exactly how this shroud type of setup works. So the shroud is 3D printed, um, and this is from the meter box, and it actually angles like this. And then the fan 
These are the axials. This is another one of those 1225s. And you wanna make sure you check the arrows on these. You want it pointing inward into the unit as another intake. So it's like a third intake. So you can go ahead and you actually like screw it right to the right to the unit just like that. Now, once again, the nice thing is about these is not only does it come with the screws, but there's actually some nuts in here too, and some rubber grommets too. So you actually thread through and these aren't threaded. So you need the nut on the back side of this unit there, but that's exactly how you would do that. And then you actually take this unit and it's a really uh, tight, snug fit. And you put take your KS0 or KS0 Pro and push it in on the power side. So the power cable actually will fit, as you guys saw, right through the little hole here and plug directly in. And that allows the air then to go through this fan, through the duct, into the KS0 Pro, and then out the opposite side, which is the Ethernet side, at least for the KS0 Pro, which is pretty slick. All right, last test of today's video. We have the shroud on the back pushing air through with that additional 120 millimeter fan. We have the other 120 millimeter fan on the other side pushing inward. And then we also have the internal fans at 100% pushing inward as well. So after 30 minutes, let's take a look at the results. So the room is heated up a tiny bit more, which makes sense. We're now pushing more airflow, more CFM over top of these hot chips. So it's 75 Fahrenheit now with 24 Celsius in this room. So the average hash rate is about 290 right now. So we're kind of give or take there. We're down about five. But as you guys know, with these KS0 Pros, they're not super consistent. Watts at the wall are the same at 148. Now the temps on the outside of this unit have dropped even more down to 94.6. They're definitely significantly cooler. The average chip temps have dropped as well by two Celsius down to 49C. There you have it. Five different tests overclocking our KS0 Pro with the free T-Swift firmware, as well as adding and testing a boatload of different cooling solutions. I'll let you guys decide which one you guys like best. Post down below. I bet some of you guys have some really creative cooling ideas. I went through and talked about a boatload of things today, referenced a bunch of different things. I will put links to everything down below if anything interests you. Well, that's going to wrap things up for today. Have a good one, guys. Are high energy rates cutting into your crypto mining profits? Introducing Terra Hosting, your solution for first class, hassle free crypto mining. At Terra Hosting, we specialize in hosting services tailored for GPUs, ASICs, and AI machine learning. Say goodbye to skyrocketing electricity bills and noisy, heat-producing hardware. Our unique service offering combines low electric rates with a community blockchain-oriented data center, while ensuring your equipment stays safe and secure. With Terra Hosting, you simply set it and forget it. Contact us today to learn more and get answers to all your questions. Terra Hosting. Trust as a service.